Hello and welcome to the second in the series of videos from Yellow Crown Tai Chi. My name is Harold and in this video I'll be showing you the second move in the 10 step form, Repulse Monkey. Before we can actually do the move, we need to do another basic Tai Chi principle. In this we have to learn how to turn our body. To do this, we use a very simple exercise that we call the swing. In the first lesson, we looked at a move where we used our legs pushing and pulling together. In this video, we're going to look at how we can use them posing. So one is pushing and one is pulling. This helps us create a move that we use in Tai Chi that is called the swing. So if we can go back to our just right position and sit down and be like bears again, what we can do is look at how we use our legs. So in the first move, it was down and up, down and up, but that's working together. We want them to move against each other so that we can actually turn from one side to the other, like this. Most people, when they try this for the first time, by no fault of their own, will do it by twisting their shoulders like this. This is really, really common. We want to move lower down in the body because we want to keep the torso straight when we're turning because that's one of the things that needs to be just right. If I'm twisted, I'm not right in the back. I want to make sure that my whole torso moves together as one piece. So we don't want to be turning in our shoulders, we want to be turning down in our hips. And to do this, we use our legs because they're attached to our hips. This is the reason why I'm wearing my snazzy shorts today, so you can see what's going on with my ankles and my knees. So how do we get this turning effect in the legs? If we go down to our just right position, which I showed you in the first video, what we do is we actually straighten one leg, i.e. one ankle, one knee, which then moves one hip, and we bend the other ankle, the other knee, which then moves the other hip. So if I straighten my left leg and bend my right leg, I'll turn to the left. And if I bring my legs back to neutral, I'm in the middle. I'm back to just right. I do the same the other way around, straighten the right leg, bend the left leg. And back to the middle. So if I straighten my left leg and bend my right leg, I turn back round towards the camera. If I bring them back to just right again, I'm looking towards the wall. If I do it the other way, I'm facing away from the camera. I'm back to the middle. One way to help yourself with this exercise is to use a teaching aid. I'm using this stick because, well, I have these kind of things lying around but they're always very helpful for making sure you're getting the practice right. Anything about two foot long and straight is perfect. What we're going to do is we're going to go into our stance and we're going to place the stick where our hands will naturally hang on top of the thighs. So if my action of turning is good, the stick moves with me. So that tells me I'm turning. If I'm moving my shoulders, this will happen because my hips and my shoulders aren't moving together. Now, the problem with this is it's all very stiff when we're doing the movement. It doesn't feel just right. It doesn't feel relaxed. We want it to feel a bit more like we're doing something gently. So what we want to do is we want to turn this from this kind of stiff twisting thing into a more fluid swinging action, a bit like a pendulum or a swing. So starting off gently, we're going to take this turning action and turning it into a full swing. We're going to start off by going to one side. Remember, you're watching this on the screen, I'm going to be doing our image. So to turn to our left, we're going to straighten the left leg and bend the right leg. Remember, only go as far around as you can. The 70% rule applies here as well. So we're turning to our left. And that brings us around a little bit. We then come back to the middle. 
and then turn to the right. And then come back to the middle. Now, every time we come back to the middle, a little bit of energy stored in that bent leg pushes us back round. We're going to use that to help us swing to the other side. So first we swing to the left. Don't stop in the middle, then swing to the right. Then back to the left again, and then back to the right. And back to the middle. So once we've got the swinging action started, it feels a little bit weird because our arms seem stiff. For some reason, I feel a little bit like Yosemite Sam, you know, walking into the bar, fixing to have a fight with someone. So what we do is we let our arms move. Our instinctive reaction is to make them move like what we do when we're walking. So what happens is when we swing, this happens. So now for some strange reason, I feel like I'm down the gym on one of those skiing machines. Now this doesn't feel quite like Tai Chi to me. So one of the things we want to do is make our arms feel like noodles, so that they're all wobbly and loose. So instead of my hands going forward and backwards, I let them wrap around my body when I swing. Like this. So yet again, I have to thank Miyagi-san for a brilliant reference of how to do this move properly. At the end of Karate Kid 2, poor Daniel-san is getting beaten up and he needs to be taught how to fight properly. Because he's stiff and he's sore, and Miyagi-san says, you need to be relaxed, you need to be loose. And they all start playing these little spin drums that have strings that swing around and hit the drum. Just like this. So that's the swing. This is a core movement mechanic in Tai Chi and is used in some shape or form in almost every move. So we're now going to use this swinging action with the addition of some hand movements to create our second move in the form, Repulse Monkey. So before we can actually do the move, we have to find a starting position to work from. If we go back to the painting of the fence and the starting stance, we can actually find out where the starting position for this move is. So we get our feet straight, bend our knees and sit down. Make our shoulders like a bar and have our head up nice and straight. Doing the first move, we breathe in, then we sit down as we breathe out. So breathing in and sitting down. This gives us the bottom of this position. If I breathe in and stand up, this gives me the top. So back down to the bottom, back up to the top. But we want to finish it just right. That's halfway down, just like the Grand Old Duke of York's men. Neither at the top, neither at the bottom, neither up nor down, in the middle. Breathing in, breathing out and sitting down. Bottom of the hill, top of the hill, neither up nor down. So now we have our starting position, we can actually look at the first part of the move. We're going to do it without the leg movement so you can get used to doing it with your hands first. So if I bring my hands up to the starting position, I can explain the first movement in the hands. It's really quite simple. It's like you're opening a big box. You have two sides of a lid and you're simply opening it. All you're doing is turning your hands over by moving them from the elbows. So if I bring them back to the middle and open them out like this. My upper arms don't move. All that happens is, is my hands move from pointing straight in front of me to pointing out to the sides. So rather than just open and close the hands, we want to move them somewhere else. So if we take our hands up to the starting position and then open them like we're opening a box, what we want to do next is fold one arm from the elbow. So if you take your right hand and fold it from your elbow towards your right ear. 
Now we're going to do the left hand. So we're going to open the hands out. And what's happening here is my left hand is coming in on a little circle towards my belly, like this. So we know what each hand is doing. So we want them to be in unison and move together, like we were doing in the first move. So if we bring our hands up, open the box, fold the right hand of the ear and bring the left hand in, we end up in this position. I always think I'm kind of like C-3PO when I'm doing this. Something sticks in my head and I just think of, you know, them on tattooing him and R2-D2 having an argument about where they're going. So at this point, we can come back to our set of mittens. So rather than being attached to our feet and our hands, we're wearing them in the traditional way, one on each hand. And we're going to use the mittens to help us finish off the move. So if we get to our ready position, just right in the legs, hands neither up nor down. So it feels like I'm playing a piano. I'm going to open the big box, fold my arms like C-3PO, and what I want to do is push forward with my right hand. What this does is draw my left hand back towards my hip, like this. And now we're going to try it on the other side. Now please bear in mind, because you're watching this on a screen, I'm doing this in mirror image to make it easier for you. So when I say left, I mean your left hand, not my left hand. Okay? So back to our piano playing position. I open the box. Left hand of the ear, right hand in. So I move to C3PO position. Left hand pushes forward, right hand comes back. So before we can put our hands and feet together in a unified movement, we need to think about where we're turning to. And to help us with this, I want to put a little idea in your head. As you're standing on the ground, you're standing in the middle of a huge clock face. So directly in front of you is 12 o'clock. This way. Okay? To your left hand side, if you're going that way, that would be 9 o'clock. To your right hand side, you have 3 o'clock. So between 12, you have 12, 1, 2, and 3, 12, 11, 10, and 9. Once you've got this idea in your head, I can give you the directions of where you're turning to and where your hands are pointing. So we have our movements in our legs and our arms, and we want to get them to move together. So to start off, we're going to open our arms and turn to the right. So if we come up to the ready position, playing the piano, and we're going to turn to our right, and we're going to turn to one o'clock and open our hands like we're opening the box. The trick here is I want to make sure that my left hand is staying pointing towards 12 o'clock as I turn, like this. So my belly button is pointing to one, my right hand is pointing to two, and my left hand is pointing to 12 o'clock. So the trick with this is Tai Chi is using the turning to help move the hands. Much like the first move, but instead of using up and down force, we're using centripetal force to throw our hands out. So if I come to the ready position, by turning to my right, I can open my hands. By turning back to the front, they'll come again again. And if I turn to the other side, so I'm using centripetal force to throw my hands open. So to my right, and to my left. Now we want to add the next part of the hand movement in, the funny part where we're doing this, okay? So the idea here is when I'm moving back from one o'clock to 12 o'clock, I want to bring my hands to that position when my belly button is passing half past 12, coming back to 12 o'clock. So if I start from my piano playing position, I turn and open the box, I bring my hands in, so my right hand comes in, 
my left hand comes towards my body as I move towards half 12. I then finish the move by coming back square. So from the starting position, turning and opening. One. Turning back a little bit, bringing the arms in. Two. Squaring up and finishing the move. Three. And now from the other side. Ready position. Turn to 11 o'clock. Right hand stays at 12. Left hand goes to 10. Turning through half 11. Left hand comes to the ear. Right hand comes to the hip. Squaring up. Left hand comes forward. Right hand comes to the hip. So if we have the movements on the left hand side and the movements on the right hand side, we just need some way to connect them together to flow them into a sequence so we can do repetitions. From our starting position, turn to one o'clock, open the box. Turning halfway back, the hands come in, finish the hands off with the mitten pull to square. To do the connection, I'm going to use centripetal force again. So starting from here, if I turn to 11 o'clock, my body will force my hands away. Because my right hand is at 12 o'clock, it's going to go straight out. My left hand, however, is going to swing out like I'm throwing a frisbee. A little bit like this. This means I can continue to move through, bringing my hands in, and finishing the move here. From the starting position, Turning to one o'clock, opening the box. Right hand comes towards the shoulder, left hand swings in. Right hand pushes forward and pulls the left hand to the hip. Notice that my right hand hasn't pushed too far forward and my left hand is actually at an angle not pulled straight behind me. So when I use the centrifugal force, I will swing towards the camera, my right hand stretches out and I continue through the move. Unfortunately, this move wasn't in the Karate Kid movies, so no Miyagi wisdom here. What I'm going to do is show you a little tip that I use when I'm teaching this to other people. I'm going to use this stick to demonstrate a very interesting principle in Tai Chi. It's called holding a ball. Now, under these circumstances, it's a little strange and a little bit hard to find the ball, but it will make sense once I show you how. When I'm doing the move, there's a point where I want to be holding a ball. So if I bring my hands up, open the box, and fold my arms like C-3PO, at this point, I want to feel like there's a ball in my hands. So in that position, if I put the stick between my hands, so this is at one end, and this is the other end, when I'm in that position, the stick represents the middle of the ball and I'm holding the ball in front of me like this. So we've got opening a box and holding a ball. To finish off with, we go back to another nursery rhyme. I'm a little teapot. Here's my handle, here's my spout. Now, in Repulse Monkey, my spout is at the front, like this. This keeps the arm bent, okay? But we don't want any tea pouring out, so we bring our hand up. My handle has to be a handle. I don't want my arm pulled behind myself like this because it's a bit tight on the shoulder. The best place is sitting on your hip with your left hand actually pointing at the elbow of your right hand. So to finish off, I'm going to do some repetitions of the exercise so you can get it into your head. Of course, like I said in the first video, can't remember everything all at the same time. If you can remember one piece of important information as you're doing it, that's always very, very helpful. So into your ready position, feet straight, bend the knees, sit down, bow shoulders, head up. Breathe in and then sit down as you breathe out. Coming up to the top of the hill, 
then halfway down again. Turning to one o'clock, open the box, hold the ball, I'm a little teapot. Open the box, hold the ball, I'm a little teapot. So that's Repulse Monkey, the second move in the 10 step form. Much like the first move from the first video, you can do repetitions of this to get it into your head. The same can be said for all the moves that are going to show you in the rest of these videos. If you'd enjoyed this video and find the information in it helpful, please consider liking and subscribing to our channel. There will be more videos like this showing the other moves in the form, and I'll be putting links in the descriptions below for the rest of the video series. My name is Harold and thank you for watching. See you again in the next video.